really, really has not been priority prioritizing that that champion this year. Mm. All Jana, all Nami, pretty much. We did see the Leona, but it's it's mostly Jana and Nami. He likes to peel these days. I'm a little worried now with these bans. It makes me think that these teams perhaps are, are not researched as they should have been with the Rumble ban targeting uh, Aluka. Really not showcasing any power, any prowess in that champion throughout the LPL, and uh, kind of odd to be honest to ban that. I'm not sure what they're going for with it. I mean, Aluka's one and six on Rumble right now. Is that a champion that you want to ban against Aluka? <laughs> right. Well, we also did see the Ezreal ban from Gambit against WE when it was yeah. not even the same mid laner who was the big threat on Ezreal. That was Ninja. Mm. So uh, I think some. Some questions here, but in fact, uh, WE is going to ban the exact same champions that TSM banned when TSM was on blue side up against CJ by rounding out with that LeBlanc. And finally, somebody has been listening to what I have to say about Marka. <laughs> they have banned it, so I'm really glad about that. And the first pick, I think we'll probably see maybe a Janna pick up here because Woodley has really liked it, or perhaps the Nidalee jungle, but... Uh, First pick Nidalee jungle can be rather risky. I, I think you definitely take Nidalee here because otherwise CJ has uh, shown that they're willing to take it on their first round of the draft on the red side previously. Uh, so I think that would be a pretty good call. Uh, the Lulu not available, which is what they picked against Gambit, but they have shown a willingness to grab that. And if I don't, I don't even know what to say Jeez. about this again. I mean, yesterday we saw Luca banning Spirit Zone champions. He could not play Jarvan, and he banned it himself. That's not true, actually. He banned it against Cabochard. <laughs> but it was a good joke by a quick shot. And that's obviously the jungle Jarvan. And I don't know why you'd want to take that when you're not trusting your lanes, when you can get the Nidalee, who can practically solo carry from the jungle, and Spirit has done so. And not to mention that this also means there's no pressure on CJ to take that Nidalee immediately ever. We also know that Ambition's a great Lee Sin player, so this gives them flexibility. They grab the Hecarim in response, and the Corky, which is, of course, that staple early pick in the Korean draft. And the double Trinity power spike that's going to come in from the Hecarim, from the that's Corky, ridiculous. is going to be enough to overwhelm World Elite, especially with Jarvan not being as tanky as he was before. And the problem is, is that if they play Ezreal here too, the backline deletion between True Shot Barrage and a Hecarim engage is going to be pretty intense. So I think WE is very wise to start picking up that Janna right now, because if any, if this composition, if the Ezreal's there as well, uh, they can just eliminate your carries immediately. What do we think to Diana again uh, from Chia? I mean, Second game yesterday performed well and it got to that stage where, you know, Diana's kind of at home, pretty tanky, got a lot of damage in there, but this early on in the draft, what do you think that comes? It's no surprises, to be honest, after picking it two games in a row into nearly anything. But what I do like about it is that he's made the adaptation and is taking the teleport, the Ignite Summoner spell right now. For now, yeah. For now, hopefully. But the Diana pick can really deal in the late game versus these double AD compositions just because she has so much burst at end cannot be poked down with the shield. Mm -hmm. So couple that with the with the Janna, it leads me to think they're probably gonna go with another Sivir composition. It's a little dangerous running Sivir with the Jarvan just because Sivir does not have enough range to auto anything at the edge of the Cataclysm. And there's the Victor. So taking your advice earlier, picking with the Victor this time around, uh, unafraid, especially if they see that mid lane matchup. And we already do see Shia switching over to that exhaust, um, which, up, oh, nope. Teleport immediately. <sighs> you know, you, you, you want to help these guys. Uh, you want to give them what you think can, can win, but uh, but it just doesn't happen. And what I want to see is going to be the last pick from CJ. Now, we know Mad Life has gone for the Nami a lot of times once Janna is out of the pool, but I don't think the, the Nami really makes a whole lot of sense in this composition. I, I actually disagree with you. I think that if you play heavy engaged uh, supports with Victor, that you really leave him very vulnerable, especially up against a Diana. Uh, I would much rather see the, the Nami here just to provide more peel uh, for the victor. I think a Morgana would honestly just help out just a little bit, just because, I mean, it's such a speed composition coming in from World Elite, pretty identical to what they've ran before. Why bind one when you can wave the entire team <laughs> that surfs up? <laughs> But we could see the Annie. Now, uh, it is important to know TSM did show off how well you can synergize the Annie stun into the W. But that, I think it changes the flavor of Victor propositions again uh, in that situation, because you're looking more for picks at that point than you are for those big team fights. And uh, that was kind of a, a new style of uh, team play with Victor that we saw from TSM that I had not seen in any of the Korean teams that have run Victor so far.
Now, the Diana versus Victor matchup is one that we saw in the GE Tigers versus, um, I believe it was SK, but Diana running the Ignite with the Teleport. I do believe that Kuro is a better Victor than Coco, just because he has shown more games on it and has had more audacity in terms of blind picking it. But I don't think that Coco is going to be as pressured as he, as, uh, as Kuro was versus Fox here. Well, I, I mean, I yeah, think but it's definitely I mean, true. But I do think that perhaps... Um, Ward Elite's mid lane is going to be a better Diana than Fox just because of how good this player is mechanically. We'll have to see. It's, it's, you don't think so? Well, I think we've seen more carry potential from him so far, but it, I think that Diana in particular requires a lot of coordination in team fights because it's a one-way ticket into the back line. If your team isn't there, you just get screwed. Yeah, we'll see on the rift in just a bit. We'll be back with the last game in Group B right after this. Time for the final match in the group stages here at the Intel Extreme Masters. World Elite versus CJ Antis. I'm Doe. With me again is Quickshot and Deficio. Who do you think is going to move on? I mean, if you just look at the team comps and you ignore the two teams, I really like what World Elite has put together here. I don't really understand the Annie pickup for Mad Life. I feel like Peel for your Victor Corky is way better. But it might be because they got Lee Sin in the jungle, who's more, again, of appealing. Jungle not really hard engaged going in from Ambition side, so they wanted some follow-up for Shine this Hecarim. I'm not really too sure how it's going to work out. We're going to have to see. I really like the calm again from, from World Elite. That's right. Well, WE on the blue side. CJ Entis on the red side, a battle for survival here in Katowice. And we'll see who can take it. The winner, of course, goes on to an extremely difficult match against the GE Tigers, so it does not get any easier from here. And here we are. Welcome to Summoner's Rift once again. World Elite versus CJ Antis. And if, you're, if you look at CJ Antis, they have a lot to prove after that devastating loss versus TSM yesterday. The fans yeah. in Korea eviscerating them on the forums. T, uh, CJ needs to have a good game here. Yeah, especially because World Elite, it is still one of the bottom teams in the LPL here right. against a top three, top four team in Korea, CJ Antis. And it's funny if you look at the two teams because World Elite, they win games by winning the laning phase, and then they play somewhat, somewhat of a solo queue style where it's a lot of individual performances, split pushing going on. We see the double teleport again from them. And CJ, at least yet IEM, have been pretty bad in the early game, honestly. They've been falling behind and had to kind of, you know, play these late game comms where they really need to buy more time before they got to the stages where Space and Coco could really start to carry the, the, the fights. So if CJ falls too far behind against World Elite, like we have seen before from these two teams, you might be in for quite an action-packed one where it's not guaranteed that CJ will be the winner, despite them being the better team. Yeah, I actually agree with that. And I, I share the sentiment in terms of team compositions that Deficio was alluding to just before we loaded onto the Rift. You know, in the previous game where we saw SK going down because they couldn't deal with the top lane mega tank, if Aluka gets to that point, it's going to be so difficult for the relatively limited damage of Victor plus Corky to take down a mega beefy frontline. Add to that all of the mobility between Siva, Diana, Jarvan. They should, in theory, be able to run around and bypass that one-way ticket that Monty was discussing from Hecarim as well. And that's, oh. Yeah, that's the thing about CJ's comp here. Basically, they have to get ahead early on because they have to be the one deciding the fights. When you run Annie Hecarim, that is pure hard engagement on your side. No peel come in from your backline in that case. And you're against Diana who's going to dive you, Jarvan, Sion, Saber with ulti. So many things are going to dive Victor and Corky in these fights here. So if CJ falls behind, and loses the vision control where they no longer are able to set up the fights with TPs from Hecarim and Flash Tibbers from, from Mad Life, then they don't really have anything because they gotta blow up Diana or Sibia first before they get onto the back line. Yeah, well, we saw Aluka getting that quick level too from dying at that camp using that Cyan passive. Meanwhile, a lot of trading going on early on in this bot lane. I mean, Annie is certainly decent at trading in lane with that extremely long auto attack range. So we'll see how much space in Mad Life can get done. Yeah, we'll see what they can do. Of course, Aluka did that uh, death to the Raptor camp yesterday as well, costing, oh, yeah. costing Joe Miller those fantasy points. <laughs> the but, gasp. Uh, <laughs> teleports from both top laners, and we've got standard lanes as well. Yeah, standard lanes, the level two being won by the Annie Koki, as you mentioned before, Door here. Annie is really good in the early levels with the long range one trade of my favorites. here. And one of where Jana obviously is more putting the shield on the Sivir, so she's not really able to auto attack trade too well. And Nice little poke to Mystic is still, this lane is fairly tough for Corky to play in because Sevier is so good at 
you know, avoiding the, the Q damage from a Corgi, and she has the ability to fast push this wave in and force Corgi to sit and simply farm on the tower because he doesn't have the same kind of wave clear early on. He needs those rockets before he can really be left on his own. So it's going to be more in control of world elite early on in the bottom lane. It certainly should be. Coco and Chia, meanwhile, in the mid lane. Coco, of course, will be upgrading that E as soon as he's able to, to push that. But for now, Chia able to push that all the way up to the turret. And Coco, a little bit down on CS. It's one of the funny things with Victor. He's one of those few champions who needs a certain amount of gold before he can really back the first time. Because if you go back and you only have 800 gold, you're not really gaining anything because you delay your hex core upgrade, the first one right. as you mentioned before here. And that's terrible. Where other mid laners can go back, you know, you get maybe the build up to an arm guard or whatever, and it's not the end of the world for you. Victor needs those 1,000 gold before he can really go back the first time. And when you run teleport, we might see World Elite put a lot of focus on the mid lane with Spirit and, of course, Diana in there to kind of jump and poke Victor out, force him back before he gets 1,000 gold. But first gank uh, is going to be in the top lane. Yeah, getting jumped on, but Ambition well, coming okay. in a bit late visit. on that one. First uh, thought of ganking, anyway, happened. So uh, I got excited with Deficio, too. So we thought that was going to happen. Talking about the junglers, <laughs> we, we didn't really discuss, once again, this first pick, Jarvan. Mm -hmm. For, in my opinion, Spirit really needs to have a good game on this champion because Jarvan has really fallen out of favor um, with a lot of the top tier picks and a lot of the, the, the top performing teams. And Spirit tried it yesterday, didn't work. It was banned out against Gambit in the last match of the day. But I'm not a believer yet. Yeah, so. well, it certainly didn't work terribly well for Spirit the first time around. Shy, getting poked a bit by Aluka, which isn't too surprising early on in this matchup as well, too. And, and Shy's Hecarim, you know, another champion that. Huh. You know, maybe could use a bit of a... Are they going in Deficio? Boost. They might be. And oh. this time they will, because the wave is also pushing. So Luka is going to move forward here. Now yeah. they're jumping in. Here we go, trying to make something happen here. Luka gets pushed back towards that wall. Ambition comes in off of the queue. But Luka not even needing to use that flash. Ambition going to get stunned for a moment. He's actually taking quite a bit of damage. But Luka, of course, not able to go back in. And Spirit able to take that early dragon, potentially, for WE. Yeah, he was already on the bottom side of the map. And remember, we mentioned how Sivir and Janna is going to push this bottom lane up. That opens up for an early dragon because there's no risk of Mad Life and Space suddenly moving from the lane to stop Spirit and kill him. Right. So just a nice setup as soon as the C Ambition and half this bottom lane and the mid lane as well pushing in for World League. Good little early setup by them. And it's fun to see how Ambition is now putting focus on Shy's lane, because normally Shy is just farming on his own, but he's playing Hecarim, he wants that Trinity Force, so a bit more of a carry champion for him, well, and obviously that's why. I think you're right earlier when you said that uh, they really need to prevent Aluka from becoming that hyper tank that he so often does later in the game, so that will put a lot more pressure on the CJ to make sure that top lane is shut down. Yeah, we don't see it working just yet. Ambition yet. spent a fair amount of time, it hasn't necessarily cost him a whole lot, just uh, two small attempts in terms of making something happen. But I like the fact that World Elite did sneak that dragon away. It was very heads up play. It shows that they were reading the map relatively well. And, you know, for World Elite, the longer they can drag out a laning phase, I think the happier they're going to be. They want to get some power spikes. You want Diana to get towards most likely Abyssal or, or maybe even um, Hourglass if she wants to rush Take that. Take two, honestly. It's going to be Abyssal first into Hourglass most likely for him. And yeah, that's where we really see Diana start to shine because she can dive the back line. Right. She can survive the burst. If Victor pops everything on Diana in a team fight, she pops the Hourglass and you avoid simply most of it from, from Coco. And that's why for CG enters, if they do fall behind and cannot get to set up these fights with Hecarim and Annie, they don't have enough peel to stop World Elite from diving this victor in every single fight. He's so immobile, the guy did not invent a rocket pack, and that's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, CJ do have a lot of tools to start fights, so as long as they do play uh, aggressively, more than their opponents yesterday, CJ played against a heavy engaged team from Gambit, and Gambit simply didn't find the right team fights. CJ will need to almost channel a better version of that with this Hecromani, and Space is going oh, in. Space, yeah, going in on a Mystic. Pretty hardcore. Can he get the first blood? There's a heal. Space still sticking around. Here comes Mad Life as well. Oh, Mystic, we low, and there's the flash. The first blood taken by Bloodthirsty Mad Life. Of course. What do you expect in Mad Life trying to shut down all those uh, haters from yesterday? Making the plays under turrets. Something to prove indeed. Absolutely. Bit of a weird trade by Mystic, though. He could have run away. I mean, he kept his trading one one by one, or one, one for one there. Yeah. And in the end, obviously, around. Mad Life came down from the early room. Could be one of the other reasons for Mad Life picking this Annie. Not to flash ignite a, an animated carry, but <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> simply for the early roam and the pressure he can put on the map. Diana is a champion Ooh. who's very mobile in this mid lane, so you can go and 
kill off fairly easily with a roaming support and a Lee Sin to really try and shut down the pick. But for now, there's been, been no ganks in this mid lane. Ambition put all the focus top lane and An now instant, invading. Instant missing pings from Shia, from that middle lane. The moment Coco was no longer there. So I feel like Spirit reacted very well. Yeah. And some good communication from World Elite. Something that we felt was a little lacking. Uh, in some of the team decisions, but quite nice to see that substitute mid laner she, uh, feeding information to the jungler. She and Spirit moving up into this jungle now, but they could be in a little bit of trouble. Coco Madlife could come from behind. You see Ping's already going down. She on the run. Shai's going to try to box Spirit in here, but Aluka coming in from behind. Shai's going to engage onto Spirit, pushing him away just slightly, and she uh, able to get away. I was so, anti no kill. <laughs> yeah, I guess not. Yeah, I thought it was going to be exciting. Wasn't. Everything around this top lane has been too <laughs> no, no, no. exciting, though. No. They're playing with our emotions, man. <laughs> we saw Mad Life again, however, roam on this Annie, and that's why he picked it early on. Simply because Corky's one of the champions after level six who can handle himself in the lane and just sit there and wave there with rockets with his Q and get most of the farm. And then you have this roaming support now. Mad Life, again, he likes to roam around a lot whenever he can, trying to shut down this. I'm always, almost going to call them a solo queue team from World Elite because they got these two new members, they got, they got the communication problems. Yeah, it seems that, a bit like that. that and, and that really has been now the tactic for CJ in this pick and ban phase. Will it pay yeah. off? Well, but it looks like we've got a little bit of a pause here. And Ambition just left the game, so a little bit of an issue with Ambition's computer. We'll see what that is. Obviously, if your jungler's not in the game, it's kind of hard to it's hard to win sometimes. Especially in, uh, yeah. in the team composition that CJ have put <laughs> together. The thing is, right, the laning phase has gone out. We're about 10 minutes in. Even as far as you can be on, on gold, uh, one kill in favor of CJ Entis, but Madlife had to burn that flash and ignite for it. So there's a little bit of timer before you can go for the, another aggressive engage. Mm. It's just standard lanes. There's not a whole lot to talk about. Everybody's farming well. Everybody's doing what they need to do uh, at this level of play, even across yeah. the board. I do have to give some credit to Aluka. I mean, I was a bit hard on him yesterday, said he was one of the worst top laners in the LPL. Here at IEM, he's been performing okay, honestly. His laning phase has been pretty good, especially on Cyan. He shut down Dyrus on Kennen as well when they played yesterday against Team Solar Mid. So I gotta give him the credit here, and he's been doing a good job avoiding the ganks as well from Ambition. Well, I think uh, Shy is a good matchup for him as well, too, because Shy right now isn't the most aggressive top laner as well, too. So Luca's gonna, you know, have a little bit of time to sort of farm safely. We've seen the gangs from uh, Ambition not work, right, working out. Lucas sends one of his minions to say hi to Shy. Doesn't want to recall just yet, and that's actually going to help maybe deny a little bit of a CS and XP, at least forcing out the teleport for Shy. Oh, you think the wave's big enough? No. Nah, he's Shy making early home so. guards. Yeah, he got early home guards as well. Yeah, from, get there. from the Korean Hecarim's here, so setting up their lovely TP gangs, and it means you can get back to lane so fast with E and home guards. And such stark contrast to when Freddy played uh, Hecarim yesterday. Did not get home guards the entirety of the match, and we didn't see SK Gaming flanking or coming in from yeah. the sides. You could argue that was part of the reason why they lost to the Flash Wolves earlier today. I think CJ Enters should be strategically more aware yeah. of how to pick these team fights. Yeah. Maybe with Mad Life on a roam, flank Shy with a TP onslaught of shadows. But again, with the, the home guards as a ticking time bomb, you have to use the items that you've invested gold into. Sure, but I like it, personally. I think it was a mistake from Freddy not building it Agreed. yesterday. I think Agreed. It, it fits so well with, with the whole the passive and everything from Hecarim, their fantastic flanks he can do. And once you get your Phage as well, that's like your two first core items, we can say, because the Phage gives you more movement speed as well. Sure. And then you go for Trinity Force after into full tank. I really like that setup from, from the Korean Hecarims. And we know Shy is fantastic at using teleports. So it's going to pay off, hopefully, for CGNs this later on. For now, this any pick. To. Yeah, it has to, obviously. But for now, the anti-pick has not really done too much. He's around the mid lane, though, to get yep. up Ambition. Uh, play potentially on Shia. Ambition does come in. Shia trying to back away. Looks like Spear's going to trap Mad Life for now. He comes in. Shia able to get a kill on the Mad Life. Shy not quite able. No, he did get Spirit after all the Chaos Storm chasing Shia around as Aluka teleported down there as well. Isa coming up to provide a bit of support on that Janna, but the fight is over. A one-for-one -one trade, and CJ putting a lot of pressure on that mid lane. Yeah, and you notice how quickly Shy was actually able to jump into that fight. Unfortunately, Mad Life, no Flash, no Tibbers. He just got melted by Spirit in the Cataclysm. But I really like the fact that it was CJ that started the play. They had the aggressive dive. Unfortunately, there was enough members of World Elite to bounce back. Yeah, and a very good ward you can see between all these red wards here from CJ and just around the mid lane. That one ward spotted the roam coming in from CJ and they could respond. Mystic trading wow. again with space. Getting low. Teleport coming in though. Space doesn't notice it. Wow, easy kill. 
<laughs> it ends up being for Mystic. Wow. And 12 minutes on the clock, Shia did not uh, have that level of impact on Teleport yesterday. Yeah. So again, as a team, World Elite also improving and growing. A nice little setup. Mystic baiting it out. He died the last time he tried to because Mad Life came down and killed him. This time they had to teleport and Spirit was right around the mid lane using the Troll Blaze to smite to play out the wave still. CJ can push it in and they should get at least a bit more damage because Mad Life, he keeps roaming around. He's not with space. Technically, space's only job is just sit and farm because he's going to get a level advantage on this cork. He's already level 9, I believe, at this point for him. So it's a big power spike, especially once you get the Trinity Force, and that's where you start grouping as CG enters, right. and you use an over-leveled AD carry with a Trinity Force, potentially even rank 2 of your ulti, once we really start seeing these fights around the 20-minute mark. And that's how CG likes to play with space. They did it yesterday as well. Mad Life, however, needs to get more from this Annie to really make that work for him, because he needs the lead, and CJ cannot afford to fall behind. Very true. Vision wars have begun near the Baron, or near the Dragon, rather. Baron's not around quite yet. And so far, both teams, a little bit of fighting in lane has prevented any real Dragon attempts at this point. Looks like CJ might be willing to give it a try. They are, but there is a ward right there, though. Yeah, there's no teleport, though, from either of the top laners. Yep. And of course, CJ have got better positioning. You can see Shy started the recall. With his home guard, he's going to be in lane very, very quickly. Well, delete. Not even going to make yeah. an attempt. So even out the dragon. dragons. Yep. For CJ, they will pick up their first dragon of the game. They're getting Drift Scuttler. Not even worrying about that kind of weird floating rocket dragon head ward. That's that's an interesting ward, isn't it? <laughs> yep, for sure. But I, I like the play from CJ. Yep. You know, Spirit wasn't there. They take. We oh, because there's no TP in that is coming in. Oh, Spirit, yeah. Knock up on the Mad Life. Spirit trying to get it. Oh, he stunned him with Tibbers. Shia coming down as well, too. Looks like Rowan won't knock anyone up, but Shia getting an easy kill on the Mad Life. Now that Diana really starting to do work. Oh, Ambition coming back in, though. Kicks Mystic away. He didn't have the damage, and Coco not in position to add on to it. Get the killing blow. So in the end, WE just comes away with a kill. Yeah, and again, CJ, they want to start some picks here. They went for Spirit, flanked around him, but World Elite instantly, they Grouped together with these four guys on the bottom side of the map. They're moving very fast. We can see pings coming down from the team as well. Got another kill onto Mad Life. Even oh jumping boy. space now. Yep, space. Valkyrieing away. Still had his flash and heal. Didn't need to use those. But she is still pushing him out of lane. And that's going to let them get a little bit of damage onto that tier one bot turret. And now we've gotten to the point where teleport on your mid laner suddenly pays off. Because yes, it makes you weaker in the laning phase. But he didn't get punished for it. He's two kills now. Yes, there were a few roams from CJ, but they didn't manage to shut him down. Now he can become a split pushing force. Who's going to stop him later on? Are you going to send Victor down in a one-on-one -on -one against Diana? No, that's not going to happen. Probably not. And Hegram is going to be standing against the Sion anyway. So you now have this 1-3-1 setup from Willie. They used it yesterday so well against Gambit, and there's just no response because you cannot deal with double global from a side of Willie. Yeah, yesterday was triple global with a Rex Even, as yeah. well. So Willie showing that. They want to push the map, they want to maintain control, and she is going to get the first tower of the game. Yep. yep. The mid lane turret really low as well, too, for CJ, so WE should be able to pick it up in the near future. Mad Life just checking blue for the moment, but CJ already losing a lot of map control here overall. And we can just look at the items here from, from World Elite. Like Mystic, he went back, got early attack speed on his boots, simply so he can wave clear faster. You don't need the Infinity to clear a wave, you just need one or two. One or two hits with your, uh, one hit with your Q, I guess, and then one or two hits with your W, and that wave is cleared. So the attack speed really comes in handy because they moved him to the mid lane where he's just sitting there. He's not doing anything other than kill minions. That's all he's going to do. It's about the side lanes making the place at the moment. We also have seen Coco upgrading his hex core a second time because he knows he's going to need to peel for himself. So he needs that Q movement speed to yeah. stay alive in that back line. Well, CJ trying to get their first turret of the game. Spirit is around, so is Shia. That's not quite enough defense, but Yisa's coming down as well as Mystic, so WE trying to bring four people to save this turret. Looks like they will. Meanwhile, Teleport coming in as well. We'll see if the Luka can handle it. Shy teleporting down too. There's the Scion Ultimate Flash on the way. He's running in the wall. Shy gets into the back lines with the Onslaught of Shadows. CJ looking okay, but Mad Life in big trouble. Shia gets the kill. There actually went to Scion. The Luka already that crazy tank. Space, though, able to help Shy pick up another kill for CJ, and now a Luka on the run. The ult from Scion didn't really oh, connect with anyone. They are going to die. Well, they thought about it. That would have been a little bit risky. So many turret shots taken by CJ, and we'll see if they still have enough health to take this turret. I think it's going to be a little bit iffy. 
Well, they got a few oh, minutes left. Yeah, they got it now. World will lead. Not healthy enough to do anything. There is teleport on Diana in 10 seconds, but no ward behind. Teleport 2 here. Yep. That was a good tip by Mad Life. Got two targets with it. Spirit ended up dying first. He didn't get to do anything in the fight. Just got blown up, making sure CJ could win it. And of course, as Mad Life was peeling backwards, World Elite trying to chase him down. Just bought, excuse the pun, but space and time for Coco and Space <laughs> to, to deal damage. So all that focus onto Mad Life. I think that Tib is definitely, definitely saving CJ Antis for a two for one as well as that tower. And that's what you gotta do when you run Annie instead of a disengaged support here with Victor Corky. You gotta be the one landing that tapers onto World Elite. That's your sort of peel. And then obviously you have to Lee Sin with the kick, but he can only choose one target, and that's gonna be a Diana, a Javan, and a Scion trying to go for your backline. Who do you who do you choose? Yeah, and Annie picked up those distortion boots as well. I felt Edward did not have enough flash engages yesterday when playing against CJ Entis from the roams that Mad Life was, has already performed in the first 20 minutes. The movements around the map, it feels like Mad Life really wants to be impactful, and it's because he has to be. Because he's, he's the reason they pick it. Correct. And yeah. we need to just see those flashing gauges coming out. You can see Flash almost off cooldown. But Scion's going to come from the side, and he's going to see if he yeah. can find a target. Spirit coming in, and he does manage to connect with space. Coco is right there as well. Can he save him? Spirit gets really low in the Cataclysm. They do get the kill onto CJ's AD carry. Coco able to zone with that Chaos Storm, so it looks like that's going to be about it for that team fight. We'll see if CJ can defend that mid lane turret now. We saw CJ, though, try to play around the Corky. We talked about the level 11, so you got ranked to ult, you got the Trinity Force, there's a massive spike for you, and that's why you start grouping and poking down this tower here. They got the mid tower, they got the bot lane tower as well beforehand, so that's very good for them. But also, we just saw the power of World Elite when they can get the engaged space. Had no flash, so he simply got locked down by Cyan ulti. Jarman went for him. And that's going to be the problem for him all game long. Let's see what happens top, though. Well, Shy finds Shia. We'll see what this duel ends up with. I feel like Shy. we'll see what he can do. Shia in a little bit of trouble. Ooh. That's a solo kill for Shy on that Hecarim. He takes it. Shia just stuck around. Yeah. Look at that horse. That horse was amazing. He was. <laughs> <laughs> no hourglass yet for, for Diana here. So yeah. no armor. Build all magic resist first. Shy. Winning the first duel, but he hasn't won the entire war yet. It's true, but this is a point in time where CJ starts to make progress in their games. Yeah, they can be a little bit down in the first 15, 20 minutes, but it's really right now where CJ starts to group up, have great team fighting, and make plays. And to actually explain why I think that was such an important kill, Shy 301 is the person that's going to try to deal with Shia. Definitely. You know, we touched on how Shia wants to split push with that teleport from that Diana. And if Shy can keep scaling, can keep getting more tanky and more damage and be the disruptive force that CJ needs, it's going to be off of those engages. Dragon started by CJ, World Elite are relatively close by, but top and mid still need more time. They're too late to the party. Yep, CJ with another dragon, and things are starting to turn around a little bit here now. Only problem for Shy is there's an hourglass completed now. For then oh. even Ambition. Oh, yeah, kicks Shia away. away. We'll see if anyone else can catch him. Meanwhile, Spirit getting a little bit caught. Pops a Cataclysm. Mad Life flashing out of that one. Aluka there to kind of scare everybody away. Chaos Storm dropped by Coco, so no kills on either side, but crucially, that Flash and Ignite used by Mad Life, that's going to make the engages for CJ a bit more tough until that comes back up again. Yeah, and of course, you know, Shy was a little bit out of position there, wasn't able to respond to World Elite. Yes, I think that, that Hourglass is going to make uh, Shy's life a little more difficult when dealing with Diana, but that previous duel was quite heavily in favor of Shy with just the Triforce. It was again. And no tanky stats either. Yeah, again, okay, so there was no armor on Diana before. There was no arm guard or anything. It is completed now. If we're going to see a Nashos coming in next, yes. waiting for the attack then speed, I'm scared. Shy won't be able to do anything yeah. in the one on one because he cannot stick around. So much of a Diana, Diana's late game damage comes from a passive. Every third hit, obviously. Fantastic scaling. I believe it's like 0 0.8 AP ratio with 200 damage in base. So it's a fantastic passive late game. And that's where in the one on one, Duel, the Hecarim obviously has to stay nearby and keep hitting, keep hitting himself. He won't be able to do that against the Diana. Very true. Shy, though, quite a bit of CS up on Aluka right now as well, too. Looks like they're going to do a little bit. And Shy taking quite a bit of damage this time. He's going to have to flee. Ooh, gets slowed a bit, but he'll get out anyway. Power Pony. Yep. Going to be able to get away. That's a lot of confidence as well. Shy knew full well that he didn't have any damage threat to deal with. The Luka's just gone full tank. Frozen Heart. Got the uh, uh, cowl at the moment, but oh, ambition. ambition 
Shia jumps on him, looks like Ambition can safeguard over that ward, so he'll make it out, but he's got to be so careful. Punishing Ambition is what a lot of teams Hecarim have done, coming. and here we go, Hecarim, yeah, coming in onto Aluka. <laughs> a little bit more damage. Space is right there as well, though. Can CJ actually collapse on this? Aluka actually uses that ult to try to catch space. Can't quite do it, though. There's the ult from Shy coming in, the fear. Nobody there the to the make team? anything out of CJ. Yeah, the rest of the team just didn't come down through the jungle, it seemed like. Just completely split up here from CJ. We are still the Hecarim TP with the home guard and right in the face of a Scion who's going to be like, okay, yeah. I'm just going to hit you in the face and stop your home guard. I mean, I don't very care. Odd. And then the rest of the team kind of split up. There was no flash from Adler. Like, remember, it was blown before. Every single trade, whether it takes, whether it is for a flash on either Ambition or on Mad Life is so important because those are two of the options for CJ to engage. And we see as soon as they're down, well, well, Lee's feeling very confident they can start pushing up. Well, yeah, you can siege a little bit with this one now. WE doing a lot of damage to this mid lane tier two turret. Yeah, really smart play from World Elite, punishing CJ and just for not having their abilities. And they may even get this tower. And CJ for having no coordination, Shy went from this bottom lane straight up to the top lane after Tilbot already been used and World Elite showed five guys in the mid lane. I mean, obviously, they're just going to push it into the tower because the Hecarim has just showed himself in a different lane. Yeah. CJ really not on the same page here, and World Elite playing the map really well, forcing summoners from them, have had pretty good warding as well around the map itself, and this tower is so low. Let's see what Shy can do. Oh, he's trying to catch Mystic. Can't quite do it, though. You know, I want to touch on something that we've seen a couple times this game. Ambition was caught out, and yesterday, you know, we saw Ambition going down to Gambit a few times. Um, in the very first matchup. It feels like Ambition is consistently in a dangerous position. It cost death yesterday, it's been pressure today, but it hasn't, it hasn't hurt them yet, but you can't deny the fact that he seems to be caught out or he seems to be found out by his opponents uh, throughout the entirety of this group stage here at the World Championships. You do see though, as soon as World Elite trying to reset the map after they had a few pushes going on, the recall to base, CJ still know they have this cork here and they can push down these outer turrets, instant group mid lane, Take it down mid lane here, though. We'll go down because Diana is already there and joined soon, hopefully, by the fanatic Jana skin. Well, if they, we'll see if they decide to do it. <laughs> Apparently not. not. So, deficient. Okay. You flat out lied to Damn. It's fine. We'll forgive you. We'll forgive you. You're allowed to... Uh, oh, the tower's going to die soon anyway. Okay. Two someday. Shots. Someday soon. Within the next, you know, 15 minutes, I would imagine it might go down. Well, 25 minutes on the clock. <laughs> even on kills, even on towers, even on gold. I, 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 I like both teams' uh, team fights when the respective team starts. If CJ enters can flank with, with uh, Hecarim and, and get a good Tibbers stun, all of a sudden World Elite's damage eaters can go down. And a similar story, if Shia can find a target and Aluka can you know, run at them with that Scion, th there's great tools on both sides of the camp, and I uh -oh. think all of those big fights Ambition are going to happen. Ambition in a little bit of trouble yet again, safeguards away. And yeah, Ambition likes to check those bushes with his face. <laughs> and uh, he, uh, he's, he's lucky Lee Sin has an ability called Safeguard, because if not, he'd be dead like four times this game yeah. already. In his defense, though, Will the Lead disabled the ward in the bush with the sweeping lens. So I don't think he True. actually saw them. That's why he walked down. And we're not going to see the Nashes just yet on Will the Lead. Instead, Deathcap coming in as the third item. Honestly, I like it as Look well. Look at Coco's it, it, positioning. Yeah. They're looking for a fight. They're going yep, for that's it. That's right. Tibbers dropped down. They caught Spirit. But is there any follow-up? Space and Coco coming down, focusing onto Yisa. Meanwhile, Shai gets in the back lines onto Shia. He's going to be pushed back in that Aluka's blue. Aluka's not there. used early. Shai comes into the big vault. You're right. Aluka coming down river. He's, got, nah, he's not going to be at this fight. Shia tries to make something happen after the zone. He can't quite do it. A kill for Coco. Shai chasing Mystic down the bot lane. Spirit there to try to intercept if things get too close. Close, but here comes Coco. Mystic in a lot of trouble. Dodge the E. Mad Life chasing. He's got the stun loaded up. This is one of the longest chases in league history. But there <laughs> goes Mystic finally. Coco picks that one up. And with Dragon coming up right now, it could not be at a better time. Now, right there, we saw some of the communication problems we keep highlighting with World of the Lead. Luca was in the top lane, had no teleport ready. And that's why CG enters. They look for the fight. They got it. The kills, the Dragon, as well for them here. So nice little. Advantage for them. This mid tower, however, is finally dying. It has finally died. True, it happened. But that's three dragons now for CJ. So, uh, with the amount of stacks they're finally getting, I feel like this tier two is worth it. What do you think? I think for CJ, it's fine. The tower was so low anyway that you knew it's just going to be one or two hits from World Elite. And yeah, you are going towards that fifth dragon potentially 
on their side. So I think definitely worth it for CJ. Also with the kills. Oh wow. They gotta get over here to this Baron though. There's no two way. guys around the group of. There is no real vision inside World Elite in CJ's jungle with the exception CJ knows. of They've that one know. ward. So take a look. Shy. Teleport will be available oh. in a moment. But Ambition's low, Doa, so this could turn out to a, it's a bit, risky play. Yeah, I think it's more risky for WE, though. They have to back away from that Baron. They were going to take a lot more damage before they would have been able to kill it. Coco oh, going. on the run here. Yeah, Luca trying to make something happen. Can't quite chase him through there. Got the flash. Yeah. Running Scion through there trying to go after Victor is trying to thread a needle with a garbage truck. It's just, like, not going to work, man. <laughs> Good attempt, though, nonetheless. Most of World Elite. So they've managed to pull CJ towards them. Teleports are available. Um, successful bait, you could argue. Ended up resulting in the blowing red. Coco's flash and stealing the red buff. So if yeah. World Elite find another uh, opportunity to jump on Coco, he's significantly less mobile. And they can if they just bait the Baron again. You force CJ to come down towards it. You know there's no flash on the mobile Victor in the back line. That's a way for you to start the fight once Science ulti is ready. But we haven't seen World Elite use these two teleports in a while now. Not really been too much split pushing going on. Been a lot of team fights. And they've been on cooldown, you know, first Diana's was on cooldown, then Science was on cooldown now. Haven't really gotten to use the 1-3-1 one, one in a while. And that's also why CG has managed to hold on pretty well. Yeah, now the previous attempt at Baron, World Elite had uh, just two wards inside CJ's jungle. And actually, it was the two wards that CJ ran directly over. I couldn't actually huh. spot them underneath. This time around, there's six green woods, two pinks in the pit. There's a lot of vision for World Elite to play with. If they're not pushing that top lane and trying to make advantage with those double teleports you just touched on the Fisher, that is a lot of investment that's just going to go to waste. Use the information, play on the side of the map where you have uh, uh, something to play for. Let Shia maybe push bottom and he can TP up from behind or Luca, whoever you prefer. Do you see them they'll focus more again on team fighting in terms of their builds as well? We just mentioned before with the death cap coming in, not an ashes for, for Diana here, simply because you want more upfront burst. When you dive the back line here, obviously the AP ratio on your passive, as we talked about, is fantastic. So just go in there, get one hit with that one, and you Q and your ulti. That's gonna kill a Victor or a Corky in any given fight. And not going for Nashes just yet, maybe later on, not expecting it honestly, seeing as we got the death cap coming as the third one. As yeah, CJ able to clear a lot of that vision out. Near Baron, meanwhile, Shy with a pretty effective split push down at the bottom. And I think one of CJ's strengths have been able to sort of cause WE to have to kind of move together as a group. And if they can do that, they can kind of deny those two teleports. They can make one Summoner and Diana essentially worthless. It's kind of weird though, because it's not CJ really pushing up there. Now we can teleport to Mad Life. Yep, trying to run away. Oh. Pop that talisman. Looks like he's going to be able to make it. Luca uses his ult, though. There's a stun coming in from Mad Life. Didn't use Tibbers, just use a regular stun. Now it's Shy's turn. He's teleporting behind with home guards. Yeah, Mad Life actually just walked right into that stun, but here comes Shy. They're going to try to make a play here. On to Shia. Goes Shy. Shia about half health. There's a little bit of zoning from the gravity field from Coco. Mad Life goes down due to Spear. Coco exhausted. Gets it's jumped on in the Cataclysm. Shia manages to pick up a kill there. Space has to back away. Only ambition left. Now is Shy. Shy tries to get out of the fight. The flash used by Sh Space. Shy may be in a bit of trouble here as well, too, but a resounding team fight win for WE. Can Shy get away? Of course he can. He's Hecarim. He's got twice the legs of everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> he can run for days, but Will Elite, they don't care yeah. about him anymore. They want this Baron. We see how tanky they are in this fight. See, the Hourglass came in at the perfect time as well. Victor blew his entire combo. Hourglass denied. Nothing happened from it. And again, no flash on, the, on Coco. He was blown before. He was stuck in the middle of the fight, ends up dying. He's not really been able to assassinate anyone Ooh. on this Victor. No, not this time around. And it was CJ that initiated oh that uh, fight. She is uh, on the wrong side of the river. Yeah, and Mad Life, everybody trying to catch him. But meanwhile, the Baron is uh, not being taken by WE. They actually turn to try to save their mid laner space, forced back into the mid lane himself. Mad Life in a little bit of trouble. Ambition comes in with the safeguard to keep that health a bit higher. He just ends up getting slowed. Shy coming in to try to disrupt the back lines. And there is Coco. So in the end, CJ groups together, gets everybody out safely. But what's it going to cost them? Well, it delayed the Baron with number one. I think that may have been the primary focus. Shia was trying to zone off, but just to keep going back. World Elite placed the vision, they're using the vision. They're playing in the side of the map where World Elite has information and CJ has to either blindly check or, you know, be a lot more risky. Take a look at the, the lack of vision from CJ towards the Baron. Very, very smart play from World Elite. And you still just have to remember, Shy teleported in behind World Elite. Yeah. That ended up costing them those, what was it, three kills yeah. a few minutes ago.
Well, this game is really on kind of a knife's edge for both of these teams. Each team is very capable of taking a team fight right now, and uh, there's very small things, small mistakes that can lead to a pretty big win for either side. Yeah, the only small win for CJ before, despite giving up those kills, was both teleports were used by World Elite. And it means they're going to go back to just staying as five together, yep. where it's very tough for them to push up. There's a lot of wave turn inside of CJ, so you're not going to siege up on a tower, really. And you keep baiting this Baron where CJ has played some good wards now. And it's a bit risky still starting it. You know, there's a chance of ambition stealing, or you get caught in the Baron pit against like a Hecarim multi. That can ruin your day completely. And a Victor, obviously, with this massive amounts of AoE damage. So it is buying a bit of time for CJ, because World Lead has not been using teleports to really split push, but more to find team fights. Yeah, CJ enters at the moment, needs some more time, because Space doesn't have that last Whisper collect, uh, completed. And with the amount of tankiness that Luke has got over 3k hit points at this stage in time, and the Randuans on Spirit, there is a lot of frontline that space needs to deal with. They're going to try to run a Luka down, but this is going to take a long time. Yeah, meanwhile, WE coming in from the side. They have to worry about the flank. Shy's still way deep, and Coco again. He's been using that gravity shield to just zone, to just help his team get in a better position. And it certainly saved them right there. Spirit, Q lands from Ambition, but I don't think he's going to follow that one up. Yep. Oh, oh going in. a little bit of trouble. Shia jumping onto that one. Gravity field used again. They bring in Diana. Diana in a bit of trouble. Spirit traps some people in the Cataclysm. Coco did get the kill on the mid laner. Now, CJ and the rest of the Entuses. I don't know where he's going with that one. Trying to push down into <laughs> River. Shy comes in onto Mystic here, and Space needs to get there as well. Luca still a threat from the side, and I think that's all CJ's going to be able to get out of this one. Can they get the Dragon, though? It's a bit risky, man. Some of the members of CJ very, very low. Shy has Shy's to recall. recalling, yeah. He's recalling yeah. back to base. No teleport for him, but there should be a dragon more. Oh, Whoa, there we go. Close. Yep. Four dragons now to CJ, where the leader only sits on one on their side. Very nice team fight by CJ here. They chained the CC so well. No hourglass was used. Got the first kill, and then most of the damage is suddenly gone from where the lead side. Gonna have to add a second seed to CJ. <laughs> With all that crowd control they've got. That's definitely the case. It's, it's probably not going to happen. No, not, no, not this time not. around. I, I personally prefer the Entuses. I would have thought it's, the one, Entuses? it's one Entus, two Entai. What did I? CJ and the Entuses. <laughs> Makes sense. But um, World Elite, that, that's the first team fight that I felt that they were not necessarily on the same page. You know, WE have had a pretty good showing throughout most of this match and have dictated when the fights happened, and Shia focus down really, yeah. really heavily. The plan was for him to jump in and simply hourglass when the Tibas came down, when the yeah. big ulti came down, and he would kind of like force all these ultis onto him, and then the rest of World Elite could dive in after, but he didn't manage to get it before he got CC'd the first time, he got feared from Hecarim and everything, yep. and ended up dying. But right now, again with World Elite, not using the split push at all, they're kind of playing into the only way CJ can win, and that is by team fighting five on five, because you won't have any options for CJ to really stop any split pushing going on, and that's also why they're still staying in this game. They got the four dragons now, so the next one is going to be the big one for them. I really just want to see where they split up into two side lanes, have the Saber sit in, in the mid lane for wave clear, and then you have teleports ready in case any engage happens. Yeah, okay, it's risky against the Heck Rim with like TP home guard engage, but as long as you have proper wards on the side, he shouldn't be able to get in behind you before you can TP as well and join that fight. It's also super difficult for a team that would be relying on a substitute AD carry to lead the charge in defense and a substitute mid laner to lead the charge in terms of split, split that pushing. That is true. And we've already seen that Shia's teleports have been questionable yesterday, I think better today. But as you've already highlighted to Fischio, well, the lead, they seem more committed to team fight. Going in again. Yeah, flash. flash, Mad Life in a little bit of trouble. He managed to get Timbers off, though. Jarvin going way deep, and that's a kill for CJ Coco. Aluka a little bit trapped behind that Cataclysm ambition. Kicks Shia away, giving CJ a bit of time to disengage Aluka, taking a lot of damage from that focus fire. Shy, thinking of coming in with the flank. He used his ultimate already. And CJ just going to be happy to push WE back at this point, I think. Another little win for CJ Antis. Yeah, small one again. And a lot of summoners blown here. We saw Coco. He also saved his ulti. He knew that Diana is going to jump in, start the fight out last. Yep. So he just saved the ulti. He flashed away. And then one spear joined the back line. Just popped him with the ulti from Coco. Ooh, so that was really the setup. And now they start the Baron. Yep. TP coming in from Aluka. This is a bit dangerous. And I mean, they don't Shia. have spirit there. Yeah, it's enough. CJ has to back away. Aluka getting in the back line. Shy jumps over the wall, trying to get some damage into Shia. Shia gets the kill onto Shy. Ambition, or onto Coco rather. Shy in a lot of trouble now. 
Baron got him. Oh, and he's on the run now. Yep, there we go. Baron, he's there. He's helping. Shia really making a difference in these later game team fights. He got blown up last time. And now Shy way deep behind enemy lines. That's an easy kill now for WE. And they're the ones who can turn onto this Baron. Only Ambition and Mad Life can do anything about it. And why did you start a Baron against double teleport that hasn't been used know. for such a long time here? Great question. Super risky from CGN. This should cost the Baron for them. And even more kills for World Elite now. Yep, I don't think there's a whole lot Mad Life can do. The Baron is dying fairly slow without the AD carry. <laughs> Meanwhile, they've got bot lane pushing up too. That's not so bad. Ambition waiting for a chance to maybe, maybe come in and steal this. I WE, they're, gonna focus him. they're getting so low. Yeah, they're turning on to him. Shia with half health. Ambition in comes in a little bit early here. Ambition manages to get the kill on Dejana. Gets out. He's disrupted this Baron more than enough. Mad Life still there coming around the side. Shia a little bit in the back lines. There goes Ambition. Now they're going to turn back onto the Baron yet again. Still low health. But here comes home guard Hecarim. No teleport for Shy, But he might be it's able to the get there in time. Can he do it? There's the Baron now. And WE manages to just barely get away. That was one of the longest barons <laughs> yes. ever, man. So World Elite punished CJ Enters for that risky play thanks to their double teleports. Shield out of mana was able to zone Ambition for a little while. And while all of that was going on, the massive minion wave in the bottom lane also secured a tower for WE. Yeah. Well, CJ's one who uh, tried to take this Baron originally, but uh, let's take a look at what happened next. And remember from the last fight, flashes have been blown for Coco, and once again he's the first target to die. Baron and Alucan working together, getting kill on Shy. And honestly, here from now, it's just going to be cleanup time for World Elite after CJ got caught, got caught around the Baron itself. Well, Space nearly got two kills here. He managed to take out Mystic, nearly got Isa as well, but eventually just died. I don't know. Oh, I don't well. know what's bigger on that Scion skin: his fist or his hammer? Probably his hammer. I would Must say. Must be the hammer there. I think the hammer is a little bit bigger. Either way, he's got a furnace inside him. So if he's hungry, he can just kind of put a pizza in there. Wait about 15 minutes. Wouldn't it get pretty burned in there? I don't know. Depends on how hot it is, I guess. Right? <laughs> I guess the, the, the word furnace implies pretty hot. I guess. That's true. Maybe I it's just. just I a, just thought it would be a perk in winter. Maybe it's a brick pizza oven. I know how you like your steak. I don't know how you like your pizza. I don't want to say that. Cooked. Get some new Generally jokes. Like to it fish. Cooked. That's not a joke at all. <laughs> okay. Steak is not even in this game. We can make the steak. Fun. He's not here. Well, dragon at 25. If yeah. CJ get it, that is aspect of the dragon. But will delete with Baron and some pretty pretty good team fights in the last few minutes. CJ don't seem to be uh, hungry for more. I don't think it's going to be a very easy thing for them to win a team fight near this dragon. Luca has certainly reached super tank status at this point, even building a little bit of attack damage now. And even though this could be the fifth dragon, this could be like a, a you know game turning objective for them. It's going to be so hard to get. They're going to try though. Ambition might just go for the smite stone and the rest of the team backs away. Ooh, oh, Ambition. Ambition is dead. A little bit of trouble. Yeah, he does get taken out. CJ just can't fight this dragon. Does end up going to WE. Now they're going to turn onto CJ Antis. Coco locked up with that CC yet again. Exhausted. Can't do anything. Double kill already for Mystic. Shia grabs on his own mad life. Flashing away, but he'll Why be taken down very, very quickly. Double now for Shia. Space in the end manages to just barely get one onto Mystic, but that is an ace for WE, and they are in prime position now to take this first inhibitor of the game. Yeah, they're gonna push through. There's so much tankiness on Aluka. Oh, There's yeah. a minion wave conga lining in behind. Or is it? But it was just such great focus. Coco got knocked up multiple times and just burst down by World Elite. Yeah, no, it's bad. Inhibitor one going down. They might look to finish. Up in 10 seconds, they could try. They the help the on Aluka. Coming. I don't know if it's going to last, but here comes that first Baron powered super minion wave, or just regular minion wave, actually. First inhibitor goes down, or Nexus Hurt, rather. Second Nexus it. Hurt. Ambition there. WE, they're about to eliminate CJ from the Intox Stream Masters. Ambition fighting for his team's life. They're going to take him down, and that is it. World Elite moving on from the group stages and CJ Antis going home empty-handed. And we wow, talked about how finish. CJ have had a fairly shaky early game. They did manage to get a lead early on in this game here and then this any pick for Mad Life provided zero appeal for the rest of the team. He didn't yeah. really gain too much with his roaming either. And we saw these late, late game team fights when Coco had no flash, easy target for World Elite. Just dive onto him, kill him every single time. Yeah, have to go back to pick some bands. Ask about that mad light, that Annie pick. Was it the right one for the team composition? And then what could they have done differently to play this out? The thing that I love about this result, Doa, is now our semi-finals has North American LCS taking on LMS, and it has number one LCK taking on 
near bottom of the table LPL. Rest yeah. in peace, Europe. I mean, <laughs> I guess so. Hey, it's worlds all over again. Yeah. But what a brilliant, <laughs> brilliant performance and team showing growth from yesterday to today. Yeah, it really is pretty astounding that WE was able to come in and take out CJ Antis, and uh, I think a lot more people were expecting, uh, well, a lot more from CJ, oh, and they just course. couldn't deliver this week. Of course, really, really disappointing performance from them, and there just seems to be so many mistakes and problems for them in the game here, where suddenly one guy engages, the other ones try to run away, the TPs yeah. from Shy never really had the biggest impact either on, on, the, on the fights itself, so world elite, honestly. Full deserve to win this game. Absolutely. Congratulations to World of Elite. And now for a further breakdown of that game, let's send it over to the expert desk.